Hey there, friends. Welcome back once again to Carpo's channel. The longest channel running on YouTube. And more subscribers than anybody. And uh, voted the best YouTube channel for 15 years in a row. Even though I've only been on here for 14, I think. God, it's been a while. Maybe 13. I don't know. But anyhow. In that time... I've made it a point not to talk about certain things. Whether my subscribers notice it or not, which they probably don't, because you generally only pick up on the things that people do talk about. I have my own personal code of conduct, if you will. And uh, this is my preamble to talking complete shit about evangelical Christians. I want to make it clear that I make it a point not to talk about two things generally. One is politics. <laughs> well, yeah, specific politics about current events and what's going on. Uh, the other, well, not just relig religion could be thrown in there, I guess. Maybe that's a third one. Um, it's, And I have reasons for that, and I'll explain why. And the third one is would be talking shit about individual people. Although, at times, I do slip up. I've had my moments. You know, I had my opinion on Trump. <laughs> hey, I have my opinion on Biden, too. I I ha definitely have my... I've mentioned Elon Musk a couple times, and some of the fanboys can't handle it. But, you know, the guy's a douchebag, and I can't, I can't really see it any other way. That's just me and how I perceive the guy. I uh, have a unique perspective on... Wealth not being uh, synonymous with value. So, rich people don't impress me, right? And um, <clears throat> so, I try not to talk shit about people just because of their wealth or their beliefs. And I'm, I even made a 40-minute podcast the other day about... Basically ended up being about what's going on, you know, in the Middle East. And I just decided not to post it. It's very common. I've made several like this. And um, then as I was today perusing videos, I came across one where they were showing many pastors around the U.S. in the last few months who, especially evangelical preachers, who are extremely ecstatic about what's happening in Gaza right now. And this is because they are Christian Zionists, if you will, which I, it, it, it's kind of a conundrum. I, I've, I still pose this question, you know, I, I've studied up on it and tried to understand the perspective, but basically it's American, you know, Christians, um, evangelical Christians, they're the extreme ones, and uh, they believe that the Jews are the chosen people, according to the Bible. And they also believe in the rapture, the end times, Armageddon, if you will. And I, I, I have this strange, you know, a misunderstanding, perhaps, of how you can call the Jews the chosen people, yet simultaneously hold the belief that all of those Jews are going to burn in hell because they don't take, if they don't take Jesus as their savior, because this is a fact. This is, you can't see it any other way. <laughs> Evangelicals believe you have to take Jesus to be saved. And they also believe that Jews don't take Jesus because Jews don't believe in the Messiah as Jesus. However, Jews do believe in a second coming, a, not a second coming, but a first coming. They believe the prophet hasn't arrived yet. And the idea was that when the prophet does arrive, he will lead the Jews to their own state. Yet Zionism kind of created its own state without the return of the Messiah. And it's a very complicated mess, but I'm not going to talk about the history or any of that. This is specifically about evangelicals, which can justify homicide as long as it's not their own people. Because if you listen to how some of these preachers speak, it is barbarian, you know, but disguised under this, you know, language of protection of, you know, 
God's chosen people. Um, or, you know, this idea that when the Messiah returns, there will be this amazing rapture where they will be taken to heaven and the rest of us will face tribulation. Jesus will reign for a thousand years or maybe it's the Antichrist. You know, there's so many different perspectives on this, but there is a very strong correlation between extreme religion and prophetic last days in Christianity. And it's always fascinated me because there, there's always these dates proposed as to when it's going to happen by various groups. And of course it never does. But it's the idea is that once the Jews rebuild the temple and they build it, at, you know, and, and I believe I heard that Christ will sit in this temple for a thousand years, but this is on Temple Mount and this is the disputed territory, which wasn't always an issue. There were, you know, agreements for both religions to be able to live peacefully. And uh, for a long time, Judaism and you know Islam lived in peace in that area it wasn't always you know this state with walls but it got very complicated after 1948 of course and <clears throat> this idea that so many people with so much power over there and over here support you know, a devastation of an entire region, which really is an occupied territory, not a state, Gaza. So, you know, it it's just goes back to what I said about murder seems okay with people if it's somebody else. It's kind of the cost of war, but the war is what many of these preachers, you know, they celebrate. You can see it in the smile on their face. This idea that Armageddon's going to bring about the end times. And the end times is what many of these people want. And that's why I'm addressing this. It's not just about who's right and who's wrong. It's about the belief that conquering a region, owning an area, is going to bring about the end times of biblical prophecy. Which, to me, is really absurd because I believe it's completely misread and misunderstood. You know, the perspective people have of the Bible, and I've read several parts of it, and I'm not not getting from it what the Christians claim that it says, or at least these preachers, and the evangelicals stand alone. This isn't an attack on Christianity itself. I believe if you have some sort of a savior or a faith that helps you through life, that's a great thing. And I thought about where's the line drawn? between belief and belief being a problem. And it's very simple. It's when your belief affects other people negatively, especially when your belief affects cultures negatively. All through history, people have killed each other for not believing what they believe. And we live in a time now where folks are able to finally break free from that dogma that bullshit idea that you need to stand up for yourself by killing an entire group of people because they're somehow a threat to you. You know, how many times have soldiers gone in through history and killed every man, woman, and child just because they don't see them as human? Dehumanization is the first step towards ethnic cleansing. And it's very unfortunate that when that happens now, it can be justified. <laughs> I don't understand it. And I have a lot of empathy for people, humans in general. I don't care what color or creed you are. If you're a good person, you're a good person. And I, I have the belief that most people are good people. And so... Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think so. And the evangelicals, the amount of lobbying power that they have to get politicians to send more arms, billions of dollars worth of arms, 
to a place that, let's just say, has more than enough power already, while Americans are suffering, unable to buy houses, where the young people are not able to even live remotely close to what their parents did, where their wage has stagnated, but the house of a price has quadrupled. I mean, we're living in absurd times and we're focused on all the wrong things. But still, we allow the religious extremists to decide where our dollars go in order to fund their idea of what's important. Folks see it as kind of a a political or military operation, what's happening in the Middle East and why we've always been in that area and supported Israel. But the reality, I don't think people want to admit that it's belief in, you know, a very specific idea of a religion. And uh, that's a huge part of it as well. And so, like I said, when religion affects people, that's when I feel I have to speak up on it. And evangelicals are some of the worst the grossest people out there. And no offense, if you're an evangelical, you've already unsubscri- unsubscribed. That's fine, but I wouldn't imagine uh, one of those people would actually even watch my channel. But I have to make it clear that not every, even evangelical, is a bad person by any means. Just like um, any other belief system. I, I don't believe in absolutes or generalizations, but the ones with power... Um, Half the time, I wonder if they really believe what they say. And these pastors and these preachers, these especially at these mega churches, they're some of the grossest people I've ever seen. And so I see these thousands of people in these crowds watching these really disgusting pigs. They're usually fat with big old jowls. Um, And they're always ranting and raving about war and the end times. And you think, these people celebrate this? I I don't get it. I don't understand it. I know being with a group of people brings you that feeling of solidarity. If you go to one of these churches, you're probably going to feel good just because you're with other people. But I would highly recommend a better pastime. That's my opinion. And uh, anyhow, that's all I have. I I actually could go on for another hour, but I'm not going to. I just really wanted to explain, you know, how I feel at the moment about evangelicals, their support for, you know, this situation that's going on, merely for the sake of a religion, a belief system that some prophet's going to return and make everything okay. We need to save each other, not wait to be saved by a man that's going to return in some second coming. I hate to say it. I know a lot of people out there believe in Jesus, and I respect that, but I don't believe it, and therefore I have to call it out. You know, it's a fantasy. Jesus is a symbol for something larger, in my opinion, Um, and it's okay for a person to believe that way. But when it goes to the extremes of supporting violence for the sake of some holy land, that's when I take a complete disagreement. And that's not just for you know Jews or Christians, that's for the Muslims who fight for the same land. Not everybody does though, and not everybody who is a victim had any say in this. And so, what a fucked up situation. We're living in weird times and strange justifications for things. The media continues to bullshit people and people continue to buy it. So take a deep breath and just move on, right? Talk to you next time. Peace out.